Hello, my name is Chris Parker, and in the next nine minutes, you're going to discover the power of using GIMP. So if you're ready, let's do it. All right, let's start off with what is GIMP? Well, GIMP is a free alternative to Photoshop, and it has a lot of the same tools and features as Photoshop. So if you use Photoshop now and you're tired of paying $10 per month, you may want to consider GIMP instead. All right, so once you have GIMP installed and opened, you'll be presented with this interface. And if you need help with installing GIMP, I have a GIMP tutorial to help you do just that. So check out the link in the description below to watch it. So this interface consists of three main sections. The center of your canvas, where I am right now, will display your photo or document that you're working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a photo by going to File and open and selecting it. And then you will see it in the center of the canvas as it is now. All right, so next to your canvas, you have two panels, one on the left and one on the right side. On the left side, you're going to find your toolbox right here that consists of a lot of your retouching tools and tools for graphic design projects like your text tool. And then we have our clone and healing tool right here for retouching our images. And we have a lot of other options here as well. Now, just below the toolbox, you'll find your tool options and you can use this to customize the use of the tool that you selected up here in the toolbox. All right, so on the right side, you're gonna find panels that will help you as you work on your project. The main one is your layers panel right here. So as you're working on your project, you're going to be creating new layers to fulfill your creative vision. For example, if I grab the text tool and begin typing out something here, if we look in the layers panel again, we can see a new layer has been added to the layers panel. Now, if you're not familiar with layers, I recommend checking out my GIMP layers for beginners tutorial, which you can find in the description below. In addition to the layers panel, you'll find more within individual tabs. So we have channels, paths, up here we have some brushes, patterns, and our fonts up here. Plus, if you go up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, you're gonna see additional panels here as well. So if I click on Gradients, we will see that new tab right up here, and then we can make our choices from here for the type of gradient that we want to use. All right, just so you know, I cover these and all the other tools in the toolbox, the tool options, and more in other video tutorials here on my YouTube channel, as well as my GIMP Masterclass, which you can get at a huge discount with the link in the description below. All right, let's take a closer look at the toolbox here. So in this section, you'll find four main groups of tools that are grouped together by similar tools. For example, you have several different types of selection tools that can be used to make a selection of your image so you can precisely edit specific areas of your photo. So if we take a look right here, hover our mouse over it, we're going to see two types of selection tools, the fuzzy select and select by color. To the left of that, we have three more selection tools that are the free select, scissors, and the foreground select. So GIMP is grouping similar tools together. Even though these are considered selection tools, they've divided them up into individual groups. Now, if you don't want them in groups, go up to Preferences, Interface, make sure you expand here, and then click on Toolbox and click on Use Tool Groups. And then it's going to remove all those groups and show all the tools individually. Now, in addition to selection tools, we also have transform tools, paint tools, and then another group we can call other since they don't have one specific function. So the transform tools will allow you to take a layer and make it smaller or larger or to rotate the layer. And then the paint tools give you the option to paint on your canvas or to retouch your image. So we can paint on the canvas with a pencil or a brush, and we can use the clone or heal tool, which is considered a paint tool in GIMP, to retouch our images. Now, the other tools include things like your text tool, 
the zoom tool, which will allow you to zoom in or out of your canvas and much more. All right. So right above me here, we have our main menu. So this is going to give you easy access to every tool and feature in GIMP since all the tools are not readily available in the interface. So the menus you're going to use the most often are colors, tools, filters, and then of course, this dockable dialogues that I mentioned previously. So under colors, you're going to have options for fixing and editing your image, like adjusting the white balance with color temperature, or maybe adjusting the shadows and highlights. Now, I typically do these types of edits on the raw file itself. Unfortunately, we can't open raw files directly in GIMP. We have to use another program that works with GIMP to edit raw files. And that software that I use is called Darktable. So I can open up the raw file from GIMP, but it actually opens it up in Darktable. And then I can make my adjustments from there. Once I finish, I can then convert it back into GIMP. And to learn more about editing your raw files in GIMP, check out the playlist I have in the description below. Now in the tools, you're going to find your selection tools and your paint tools for editing, as well as your transform tools and other tools as well. Then under filters, you're going to have a variety of filters that can help you achieve your creative vision. So blur is a very popular one, which will give you options to blur parts of your image, or maybe even add motion blur. If you want to do something a little bit more creative under enhance, we have our sharpen tool right here, which will help you well sharpen your images. And we have a lot of other types of filters. All right, make sure to check out my free GIMP crash course to learn more about these editing tools, filters and more. I'll put a link to the playlist in the description below. All right. Another vital step when working with GIMP is to save your project and you'll need to export it when you're done if you want to share your artwork with the world. So let's take a look at both of those. All right. So once you've completed your project, you'll want to save it to keep all your layers intact. That way you can come back to it tomorrow or next week or whenever. And when you reopen the file, all your layers will be there so you can make adjustments as needed to save all your layers. You're going to need to go up to file and select save as and make sure you type in the name of the file you want here. And then by default, if it already has layers, it's going to add the XCF file format to the end of your name. So make sure you don't remove that or change it. Otherwise, your layers will not be saved. So once we click save, it's saved and then I can close it and then I can reopen it. And once I do, as you can see, the layers are still there. All right. Now, if you wish to share your file online for the world to enjoy, or maybe you want some photographic prints, then you're going to need to export the file to save it as a JPEG or whatever file format you need. So if we go up to file and click on export, you're going to get this dialog window where you can add the file name and the file format. Go ahead and click export. And now you can share that file with the world. Now to continue learning about GIMP, check out my GIMP crash course playlist up here or click on the bottom video for a more in-depth overview of editing your photos in GIMP in 27 minutes or less. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.